So I will concentrate here on this camera here. Okay. Okay. This is an introduction to my erotic story called Karen, a love story that cannot be filmed. Introduction. Okay. One of the reasons why I have decided to publish this story is because it just doesn't seem like something I wrote. To me, all creativity comes from God, even the crappy kind, but even though this is pornographic, I feel I didn't write it, that it was possibly, really, truly written by God, and I don't think it's crappy. Well, if I want to kind of, if I want, to, if I want any kind of credit for it, and you don't want to believe God is behind it, but that is totally my doing. It was in the late 1990s that I started writing Karen. Uh, which I now call Karen, a uh, love story that cannot be filmed. I wrote it as an experiment to see if I could actually write an erotic love story. When I noticed that it was turning me on, as I wrote it, I got scared and decided to hide it, hoping no one would ever come upon it, especially due to its sexually charged nature. I discovered that I had, indeed, written an erotic love story. Not only did I hide it out of embarrassment, but I hid it out of fear of what might happen if it were to fall into the wrong hands. Of course, what is an erotic love story to one person can be a dull, repulsive story to another. Whatever the case, I didn't want to take the chance with either, especially if it were to hurt others. Personally, I'm one of these types of guys who can uh, have the girl of his uh, sex fantasies sitting in his lap, naked, a girl he's known since he was 19, totally turned on to her, yet because I'm not married to her, won't add orgasm for her, no matter how much he begs, since I'm trying to follow the Bible's flea fornication. Scripture, like the boy in this story about called Karen. Yeah, Karen, a love story that cannot be filmed. Of course, unlike the boy in the story, I'm no longer in my teens with a lot of testosterone flowing through my veins. I, I, yeah, I'm no, yeah. <laughs> and, and have been, um, and, I, and have better control of that part of my being. But what about the guy who doesn't care about the Bible saying flea fornication? What about the guy who is a rapist or child molester looking for an excuse to do something evil with a child? For that reason, I hid this story, for it deals with minors getting carried away with their budding, supercharged sexuality due to a lack of adult supervision. Since it has that element in it, well, even now, due to pedophiles out in the world, I really continue to dread the thought that pedophiles might be turned on to the story in such a way that they could possibly use it for evil. So, to keep from hurting even one child, I hid it away, with all my other writings I feel should probably remain unpublished as well. But then I got involved in Islam, saw the huge threat it posed to not only women, but also little girls, in such places as Iraq, Syria, Nigeria, Pakistan, you name it. And since that same kind of threat now seems looming large toward all of the free world, uh, being that there is an idiot Muslim president in the White House, idiot Muslim president in the White House, only doing pinpricks on ISIS as I write this, well, I ended up feeling 
that whatever evil this story might bring about could be greatly outweighed by the good it also could be but good it also could do by shining the light on in on my anti islam writings that i've also published on the net thus far since the writing of karen i have published over 60 books to amazon most dealing with Islam. The first book I published was nearly three years ago and was a novel. Guess what? No one is buying my books. Worse, I highly doubt that they even are looking at them. The one person who did buy my book, my first novel, makes me think it might have been just some kind of fluke. I even lowered the prices of those books by two-thirds, making them the cheapest one can sell a, an ebook on Amazon to see if that would make a difference, but still nothing. And the threat of Islam continues to grow, with it the threat to little girls and women. I then it, it, it then dawned on me that I might need It then dawned on me Yeah It then dawned on me that I might need to experiment in ways to call attention to myself so my books can catch an audience Short of sighting off a car bomb at a marathon or doing any other evil unthinkable thing to call attention to my books I feel I can send that I feel can my my books I feel can send Islam reeling. I thought about that old story. I kept hidden away. Karen was that story that came to mind. I realized that the controversial nature of it just might be controversial enough to grab attention and later bring attention to those books on Islam I created. Due to it involving strong sexual tension between a precocious, brilliant, and beautiful little girl and a very well-endowed teenage boy who has a latent sexual attraction uh, for her but wants to obey God and flee fornication, I thought that might be enough controversy to uh, fertilize the plants, if I may be so bold. A lot people will probably view Karen as nothing but poorly written, embarrassing, dirty crap that only a pedophile can enjoy. But dirty crap can make great fertilizer for growing pretty flowers. Maybe Karen is that fertilizer, that dirty crap, to grow those books I wrote on Islam that I feel can only really, can, can, can that I feel can can really send Islam crashing if read by a mass audience? For one thing, Karen is far more than just two sexually charged kids getting carried away with their hormones. Yeah, getting carried away with each other's hormones. I'm hoping that I'm not the only one who catches this while reading this book. In the story, the young Will Westville is a Christian who wants to obey the Bible and, again, flee fornication. No matter how much he is attracted to any kind of girl, even if it's a girl like Karen who has a strong sexual attraction to him. There is the possibility that he could very well be a pedophile at the same time of him being a Christian, and due to not really knowing it, if he is a pedophile, even I, the writer, can't uh, answer that question. I thought that too might be controversy enough, controversy enough to have me under the spotlight with this book for further examination. And with the spotlight on me, again, called attention to other books I wrote, the ones I feel that can destroy the evil that is Islam if they should grab a mass audience. And you know, I wonder if I've got to quit here. I think I might be running out of time here. Okay, I'll end it here. And then I'll, I'll begin part two of this.
but 